full of mermaid. <laughs> well, you know, the queen is here, honey. Honey, the queen of reality television. Hi. How are you? I'm blessed. How are you, honey? Well, honey, I am even more blessed. You look good, bitch. Well, hi, you know, I have to come give you girls a little money, honey. <laughs> well, you know, it's... You know, only age backwards, honey. You never go forward. We <laughs> always go backwards. There's that brown sugar. Oh, yes. Bring it and put it Oh, on honey, the, the girls are about to gag. Right here. <laughs> I live for me to put you on set, bitch. Oh, baby. I, I said, bitch, I'm not going on Zoom. Are you serious? Nene Who's said, Zoom, I baby? ain't doing your cloth, honey. We'll be having a yeah. in person. You are, uh, I just can't wait for this. Ready? Are you ready? Come on, mass singer. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Ready? Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> What's going on? Hey, <laughs> What's going on? Yes, Atlanta. Yeah. This is Listen, good. I think you should um, have more in person. Okay. I think that is. I mean, I feel like you know you get to get you get to feel their energy. Yeah, of course. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then yeah. you guys get to laugh and kiki together. Yeah. And then people get to see what they're wearing and how they're looking because I feel like on Zoom I could stop and go and pee. And oh, not pee. pee! Yeah, fill it up, honey. <laughs> yes, I could go and pee. So, and I just feel like we would lose the moment. Well, no, that's why when you hit me up and said it has to be in person, it was a no-brainer. Well, I feel like it has to be in person for me because I am her. But everyone else, I feel like they are they, and they could sit outside. Ah! <laughs> it wouldn't really matter. Yeah. But because I am her. You are and, her. Yeah, and I should be always in person. <laughs> I feel like doing Zoom is like, we're not in a pandemic. So why am I, I don't guess we are, are we still? I mean, I'm sure there's still a lot of viruses floating around out here. However, I would rather take the COVID test and sit in person. Ah! Well, I just got red in my Monique, my Monique voice. I feel, I feel red. Well, you will be okay. How is Monique doing, Monique? Oh, she's doing. Oh my gosh, she just texted me like a couple weeks ago and said that she had been thinking about me and how much she missed me. And she's and, still with uh, Chuck. She's still with Chuck. Oh, good for yes, her. they're they're empty nesters. Their sons are off oh, to college. Is the house empty? You know, they sold the house. They moved to something smaller because it's just the two of them. Oh, and they're still married. They're still married. Oh, good. They work through their issues. You oh, know, hey, Phaedra. You know, relationships go through highs and lows. Okay. You've been married for 18 years. You haven't divorced yet. No, my African is still around. But do you have a side piece? No, I don't. Oh, of course you would say that on No, I don't. <laughs> Okay. I'm very faithful. Yeah, I'll keep it very real, honey. Yes. Okay. Me and you are just, you and I are just alike. We, but do you still like him? You know what? Because it's important to like them. I'm going to say this. I have a newfound appreciation of, for him. You do. And one you thing you and I always too. talked about is your marriage to Greg, may he rest in peace, mm -hmm. reminded me a lot of me and my African. Yes. Because... I don't try to say you got an African, honey. I do. We, well, we all have an African. Oh, please. But you're trying to say you got one of those Africans. Well, you know, I had him first before Portia and... Oh, please. <laughs> and Mr. Chocolate. It was me. Well, honey. I was those a first... Those Africans have always had a love for us long leg girls, honey. Don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I live. Carlos is out of control. Carlos, what did you say? You told him in. to put some stuff on your knees. Can you beat my knee, please? <laughs> <laughs> Beat you the guys, job. Carlos is out of control. No, now, so. Listen, but I do, I understand where you're coming from. After being married for so long, you do at some point found like, find like this, another level of respect for them. It's yes. a newfound love for them. He was and it's with important me from the beginning. to like him. I like him a lot, and I like yeah. him because, and we're going to get into this too, mm -hmm. I know at the end of the day, mm -hmm. he doesn't want me for my fame or money. That's right. When I met him, I was an intern at 11 Alive, like you, bitch. No, you wasn't ah! like me, bitch. When I met you, bitch, you were out of everything, honey. You were on E, bitch. Ah! And, um, and honey, you came together in the end. I did. God is good, honey. I've been, I've been delivered. I'm so happy for you, though. Yes, And no. I love that you guys are still together. We Do are. Do you think that you would be one of those gay couples who Couple. have a baby? Yes. Ooh. We do want kids. I want a boy and a girl. And when I got, are you going to start? You, you're getting old. Well, no. Well, honey, my money needs to get older. Oh, so. you got good money, Carlos. You can have a baby right now. You want to be able to play with the baby and travel and do things with Absolutely. the baby. Absolutely. So who's going to get pregnant? You or him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. 
It's the cameras rolling, honey. We have to get him because he tried it. Red you know, came over here. You know now, Red, have honey. you know Red that just came over here? So you guys are all in the background here. Red has been with us for a year. He and okay, I started right. the same day, same time. Oh, you guys switch positions, though, all the time. It seems like. Pause. I don't know about us. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of position. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of position. Not that kind of position. Not that kind of position. No, what we, I mean, you know, you leveled up is what I mean. You leveled oh, up. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, you started too. You were, you know, at the bottom. And baby, Mama And that's top. how it goes. You know, when I came in, the girls, I think, considered me to be like, you know. We're going to um, get into that. Uh, what do you call it? The bottom. The, not the bottom. What's the other word? Um, they used to call me. Beneath them? No, no, no. Not beneath them. Um, oh. oh, my gosh. I forget the term for it. They um, gave you a term? You mean the. The word. Oh, the. Um, 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 oh, my God. Everybody uh, else seemed to have everything, and they made me feel like I was like the, on the come up. No, not even on the come oh, up. Wow, um, I forget the word for it. Oh my god. Mm. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. No, we're gonna get into so, all of that because I was different. Well, I can game. interview you while you're interviewing me, honey. Oh, you already know. That's together, what we're gonna honey. do. So we're gonna get you together. We started together, honey. Cheers, Cheers bitch. To the girls' weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better watch those beat words, baby, before you head over there in the ocean. Come on, Candy, let's go make some beats, baby. Yes, honey. Okay. Where's Demetria? Because <laughs> the only thing we have in common is, hey, yours is going on mine and has been here. Yes. <laughs> Those were some sayings, honey. Baby. I don't know where they came from, but honey, Baby. I coughed them up. And they came. Those were the good old days, honey, when the show was good. Uh, am <clears> I sitting okay, Dre? Thank you. Oh, you have a good team. Yeah, don't live for them. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they tries it. You know, he works with Drew. Oh, so Dora. Oh, I'm sorry. That was not shade. No, that was, oh my God. This is going to be the shadiest interview if we haven't even officially started. Well, listen, let me just I say like Drew. I've met Drew. I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't watched season 15. Have you but watched 14 or the, 13 or 12? No, I don't watch. I've never watched since I left, but I have honestly watched the clips that have come down social media. Okay. But me turning my TV on and tuning in is something I just cannot do. Because as far as I'm concerned, they're all sitting in my house, the house that I built. And um, it is seemed like it's tumbling down. Ooh, I, I, I'll say this much. Well, let's get back into that because I want to start this off and we'll get into it. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been mm -hmm. years in the making. Yes. You have been my most requested mm -hmm. guest Almost since shows. I started the podcast. Yes, people requested me everywhere. No, everywhere. And I wanted to make sure it was special when you Thank came you. on the podcast. And one thing I appreciate about you, and I want the world to know this, Nene is the one who said, I want to come on your podcast. Yes. And I'm ready because I, you I, asked me in the past. Yes, I've asked her in the past and she yeah. said, I'm not ready yet. Yeah. And our friendship is not predicated on an no. interview. No. At, at all. Um, you mean the world to me. Oh, thank you. Okay, Ness, don't do that. I'm not, I know, okay. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Listen, I, I got to get this out before we, we, we start. You mean the world to me. You really do. And I can't, I don't have the emotional capacity to express to you right now how mm -hmm. much you mean to me. I adore you. Aww. I love you. Um, the first day we met, we clicked. Um, you had a quick weave and I had a, uh, um, a bald fade. We uh, were both broke, uh, um, but we were rich in, um, happiness. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I used to say. <laughs> we're rich in happiness. Bitch, we were both off struggling. I wouldn't say broke. I would say struggling <laughs> because I was living and eating good. <laughs> but we were making it It was paycheck to paycheck, honey. Yes, we were making it to me. But yes. all jokes aside... I want to say yes. thank you for coming on Reality with the King. Thank you, you made it on my list. Yes. No surprise. Yes. The number one greatest housewife of all time. Yes. You built the Real Housewives franchise on your back. I did. On your eyelashes, <laughs> your fingernail, and your lace front. Thank you. And at the end of the day, and I'm going to say this publicly, there will not be a Real Housewives franchise if it wasn't for you building the house that we call the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And you may not get that every day, or you may not get that from somebody who started 
day one with you. And I want to use my platform to let the world know you literally, literally you mm -hmm. are the reason why we're able to enjoy the franchise that we yeah. watch today. So I wanted you to know that. Thank you so much. Yes, round of applause for Nene Lee. <laughs> First question though is this, how are you? I am doing really well. I have come a long ways because um, the first time you reached out to me and asked me to come on the show, I said, I'm not ready right now. I would have not been good on the show. Uh, today, I feel like I'm in a very good place. Uh, I'm happy. I can always be happier, but I'm, I'm very happy and, 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 and I'm comfortable and I'm okay. I'm really okay. No, you, and, and bitch, you look good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Can we, can we start there? <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. No, you look amazing. And I do want to go back to the first day we met. Yeah. This was 2008. Yes. I left New York City. Yes. Um, a friend of mine named Joy <laughs> said, look, girl, there's an opportunity to go to Atlanta. <laughs> My African was living in Atlanta at the time. And she said, uh, it may be called the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Do you want to do it? Because yeah. she knew I loved reality television. Yes. And I said, of course. And what people don't know is as producers, you're assigned a reality star. Yes, you are. And I was assigned you and Deshaun yes. Snow. Yes, you were. And the first day I met you, I was enamored with everything <laughs> that you possessed. <laughs> Thank you. You were the quintessential star. And the first thing you said to me was, hey, bitch. <laughs> hey, girl. Welcome. <laughs> well, welcome to my house, bitch. <laughs> And we instantly clicked. Mm -hmm. Did you know that season that this show was going to be the biggest Bravo show that has ever been on the network and that you would be the biggest star that Bravo has ever seen? No. No. Um, I didn't know. I didn't even know what we were doing. And I don't think a lot of us did. Did you? No, I, I don't think we we were just kind of like floating around. I remember like three weeks into filming, I said to myself at home, like, I just feel like I'm trying so hard and pushing and not being myself that um, I am now going to go on camera and be me and be who I am. And I think that's when everything took a turn. It was like three weeks of shooting. And I said, I don't feel like I'm being me. Like, you know, I wasn't loose. I wasn't myself. And I went home and I said, the only way I'm going to be able to do this is that I just be NeNe Leaks 100%, just act like I act, talk the way I talk, you know, do stuff the way I do it. And that's the only way it's going to work. And I just came and started doing what I do and just talk how I talk. And I was afraid to do that because I thought people would be looking at me like, okay, she got a, she's originally from Queens. <laughs> Hello, Queens, New York. <laughs> <laughs> with the Southern Twang, because uh -huh. I lived in Georgia for so long since I was a kid, and I just thought people wouldn't like the way that I talked and all my Southernness and, and just the things that I would say. Were you but, afraid that people call you ghetto? Uh-uh. I was never afraid of that. Okay. It was just that um, I just felt like I didn't have maybe the flair that some of the other girls had. Obviously, these girls, like Deshaun Snow, was living in a 15,000-square-foot mansion. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm over here living in my little 5,000-square-foot place at the time. And Sheree is living in a 12,000 square foot house. With a and, broken gate. Yeah, with uh -huh. a broken gate. <laughs> and um, uh, Kim Zosiak was living off of Big Papa at, at the time with all of her bracelets on. And so I felt like, well, dang, you know, what am I going to do? And I just decided that I was going to just be me and we'll just see how that works. I'll, I'll say this to you. The first day I knew this show was a hit mm -hmm. was... We were at Sheree's house mm -hmm. um, filming Sheree's birthday party. Yes. And you arrived with Kim after changing <laughs> clothes at Our, the Shell gas yes. station. <laughs> and we're filming. And you mm -hmm. walked up to get into the house. And the the executive producer at the time, mm -hmm. Kenny Hall, mm -hmm. um, yes, was like, Kenny Hall. Hey, Kenny. Hey, Kenny. Um, you were like, hey, bitch, I got my little black dress on. My <laughs> eyes popping, lips busting. Yeah. And you walked up in the house and mm -hmm. got um, rejected from entering. Mm -hmm. And you broke the fourth wall. You were the first person to break the fourth wall. You said, mm -hmm. I'm a housewife. Right. Um, you see these cameras following me, bitch? I need right. to be here. Mm -hmm. And the security guard was like, I was told if you're not on the list, 
you could not come in. You could not come in, and right. you went ham and cheese, and then y'all went to a restaurant called Twist afterwards, mm-hmm. and let Sheree have it. Mm-hmm. That was the moment I knew this show was going to be a hit. Sheree mm-hmm. has admitted since then on my mm-hmm. podcast that Finally. she that <laughs> she did purposely leave you off the list. Oh, I know she did. <laughs> Now that you know that, what would you like to say to Sheree? Nothing. <laughs> Not a thing. Why would I give her any pointers? Ooh. You know, that's probably the best thing she did was leave me off of the list. Honestly, like you said, the show became like huge from that moment forward. But I always knew she purposely left me off the list. I always knew she purposely left, left me off the list. Now, the question would be why? Why leave me off the list, honey? Without me, there's no you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, she said that you two weren't getting along at the time and that she was, you know, following her own reality. She was Mm -hmm. pressured by the producers to invite you. And Mm. she felt like this is my home, my sanctuary. And if me and this girl are getting along, she should not step foot in my household. Well, that's a good thing that she was following her own reality, which has taken her not far. But um, it was the best thing she could have ever done is left me off the list. I became bigger than ever. So I appreciate that moment, Sheree. Thank you. (laughs) Do you like Sheree? You know, I don't dislike Sheree, but... For some, at one point, Sheree and I were like really, really good. Like because we met before the cameras ever rolled. Uh, I would hang out at her house. Greg and I would go to the game with her and Bob. Bob was playing football at the time. Um, for some reason, I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's like we haven't connected or clicked in years, and I'm, I'm not as sure why. I'm really not sure why. I do feel like once I started on the show and I stayed on the show and she was on and off the show for many seasons and um, the truth is I was the show and it just felt like all of them just kind of turned against me and we just our friendship just got lost in the mix but I I think Sheree is fun Mm -hmm. you know when she wants to be Uh, we've had a good time together she's a Capricorn I'm a Sagittarius we always have gotten along you know in the past before the cameras ever started rolling once the cameras started rolling our friendship just became nothing are you surprised that 15 years later Sheree is the last standing OG on the show um, I don't know about the last stand. She's the last one they could get on the show. And so, I mean, it w- there was nowhere else to go. I mean, you know, it's the people that were the stars of the show, you know, were literally me and, and Kim Zosiak. And um, you don't think Nene, Kim, and Sheree were the stars I of the Sheree show? I think Sheree played her role or played her part in the show. Um, I think. Uh, I, I just don't think the, the the network or the production company really valued her that much. They felt like we don't really need her that much. Uh, I mean, she's not the most exciting person in the world, but uh, she has her little, you know, parts that she do on the show that's whatever, but your question again? <laughs> I have become very confused with this movie. <laughs> What was the question? <laughs> let's 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 go back to season one. Did you feel like you started off being the underdog? That's the that's the word, the underdog. See, it came all together. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, I was the underdog. The first season, I was the underdog. I I wasn't sure if I would be liked. Um, I think um, Sheree, along with Kim and the rest of the girls, thought, "Oh, please, they're gonna love us, you know, and they're not gonna like her." And it just didn't work like that. <laughs> they love me and then like them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you develop an ego mm-hmm. after season one of The Real Housewives of Atlanta? I don't think so. I don't. I think that uh, people like to say, like, you've changed over the mm-hmm. years. Well, the thing is, you're supposed to grow. You know, I... I Every year you get older, you know, it's not like I'm getting younger and you learn from your mistakes and you become more and more mature. And also, I think people try to say ego when the cameras are watching you and all these people are pulling you apart every single day and you have no other choice but to be like, oh, my gosh, they just pulled apart my wig. So now you go and try to get the best wig, right? Oh, my gosh, they pulled apart my makeup. Now you go and get the best makeup artist. And then once you do all these things, they say, she's changed. Well, damn. 
come. You just pulled me completely apart. I had to change in some ways. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's an ego. You just learn how to act. You learn what to say and what not to say. That kind of stuff. But I really worked hard on being myself because I don't like to be in situations where I can't be me. When I'm not me, I'm not comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to just be me. You know, and that's and, and I feel like I'm more liked when I'm being me. I am less liked when I am like holding back and trying not to be Nene. So I just I, I really sometimes I have to say to myself, like, be Nene now, you know, be Nene, because Nene is what people like. Uh, but I don't think there's an ego. I think with all of us girls, over the years, we all change. We all get new eyes and new nose, new titties, new ass. I mean, <laughs> we have to. Because <laughs> if we did it, people would be pulling us apart. Literally, they'd be like, she needs to get her body done. And then as soon as you get it done, they're like, she got her body done. <laughs> You're like, what do you want me to do? So you have to do something. Is the, When did you think... Things change on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. When did you when did you when did you feel like as an OG, we have the number one show as black girls, mm -hmm. which was a huge feat. And I was lucky to have a front row seat in that success. Mm -hmm. Um when did you feel like the show was changing and not what you started off as enjoying the show? Um, I think it started to really change probably like season four for me. Um, season three is when they brought on, I think, Cynthia and Phaedra. Yes. And I think Kenya think, came on, or she came that on was season five. four. Season four. three was Phaedra okay, and Cynthia. Okay, well, whenever Kenya came on, was four or five. That's when I think it changed. Why? I don't know. I think all these things started. So, so for instance, when me and Lisa and Deshaun and Sheree, all of us started, the, they were our real husbands and our real boyfriends. Sheree was really married to Bob, and they really were going through a divorce. Deshaun was really married to Eric, and they started to have their issues. Lisa was really with, um, what's his name? Ed Hartwell. Ed Hartwell. I was really with Greg. Kim was really with Big Papa. Our stories were real. Everything we talked about and did was real. When we had disagreements, they were real. We didn't pretend like we had a boyfriend and we didn't have one. I mean, and then I think once Kenya came on the show, I'm not saying that Kenya started it or did it, but I'm saying at that moment it was it started to be uh let's create our storyline well we didn't create a storyline we just showed up to work and just was filming and being who we are they started having boyfriends and they weren't really their boyfriends and they that kind of stuff to me changed the dynamic of the show to me if you didn't have a boyfriend you just didn't have a boyfriend and that's how it should have been shot uh i believe now looking back in, as far as reality is concerned like shoot it is what it is like don't try to create things like we want to see your dating life well i don't have a freaking date so then shoot that i don't have a date opposed to putting pressure on me to go out and find some random dude that i'm really not dating i'm really not into just to please production why don't you guys feel me looking for a date or talking on the phone to some guy i've just been talking to for a couple of weeks rather than making me pretend i'm out on a date with somebody i thought things start to change right about then did Kenya go with us to South Africa? No, so that was a thing. So season, no, that was season five. So okay. season four was South Africa, and Mar it was you, Sheree, Cynthia, Phaedra, mm -hmm. Candy. Yeah. Am I missing anybody? It was Marlo. Marlo went to Africa. Marlo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then Kim. Kim was still on the show, but she didn't go to Africa. She didn't go to Africa. Yeah. She didn't go to any trips. No. <laughs> so you think Kenya changed the direction of the show? Uh, I think, you know, I hate to say she was the one that actually changed, but to me, that's when things started to change, right about then. In a negative way. Yeah, I felt like people started to create storylines and uh, pretend to have boyfriends and all of those things, to me, my opinion, does not make for a good reality show. I think reality shows are exactly what it says, reality, what is really happening. And I think everybody started to change then. Now, prior to her, I think, you know, I may get some of my seasons mixed up. Prior to her, I think Phaedra and Cynthia were on prior to Yeah, Kenya. Phaedra and Cynthia and came Phaedra on season three. Did started to not want to show like um 
you know, I think she showed her pregnancy because she was pregnant the whole time, but she wasn't sure about how far along she was and all of those kind of things. there's chicks mean. in the hood yeah. who don't know who they're pregnant by right. and know how far along they are. Exactly. You see, you better do that. <laughs> <laughs> so those things to yes. me... Uh, start to make the show not be what it is. Um, mm, I never thought about it that way. That's how I feel about it. I feel like, you know, when we first started, all the things we were doing were just for real. They were just for real. What, what, what were happening in our lives was really happening in our lives. Even on season two, they were really happening in our lives. I think season three, we started to get a little bit of a check because, you know, the first two, three seasons, we weren't getting nothing, honey. How much did you make your first season of Atlanta Housewives? I think my first season of Housewives, I made 10000 Total? Total. Um, Wait a I'm, second. You filmed for three months on mm -hmm. the first season of The mm -hmm. Real Housewives of Atlanta, and you made $10,000? $10,000. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and I can go back and check, because it's sure new one twenty. Um, we did a reunion, and I think they gave us 5000 for the reunion. Hmm. So we had very little money. So for all the people, there's a lot of people that say a lot of stuff. They just don't know what they're talking about. Uh, season one, we didn't make any money. We filmed that show, and it was we knocked it out the park, and we didn't get anything. Season two, we didn't get anything. I want to say season two, we got probably about maybe $50,000 season two. Season two, fifty, dollars mm -hmm. And then season three is when you season saw three, more than 100000 Season three, we moved to an attorney. All of us came together, got the same attorney, and we wanted to have favored nation. And um, I think we got $100,000. And you, Kim, and Sheree made the same season three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. It was maybe, at the most, one fifty. Mm. We started to make a bag season maybe four. Season four. Okay. Going back. But we knocked this show out of the park. Do you understand those first three years? Yes. And we were not getting real money at all. At all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, do you think you getting underpaid was because at that time, you girls were so new to this, you just didn't know. Yes. Just didn't know. Very much so. And also, when they say housewives, we all were real housewives, for real. None of us really worked. <laughs> our, our husbands were the ones that were working. We were really housewives, stay-at-home moms with the kids. Uh, I think Sheree had a boutique at some point. Um, um, Deshaun, I mean, she had her foundation or whatever it is that she was doing, and whatever the little stuff was, but we were real housewives. And so I think for us, we were just excited to be out filming and doing something. That's what I, that's how I felt about it. I was just happy to be out doing something. So when you see all of us dressing and all those events that we had, we pay for those out of our pockets. Out of our pockets. Hmm. Mm hmm Going back to season three. So the first two seasons, like you said, Ratings galore, ratings increase, breaking mm -hmm. records. Season one, you guys were, were mentioned on Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. This show was a pop culture phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Season three came in, you had Cynthia and Peter, in mm -hmm. addition to Phaedra and Apollo. Mm -hmm. um, you and Cynthia did not know each other. No. And correct me if I'm wrong, you were told to hang out with Cynthia to get to know her, to bring her in on the show. Yes. Yes, yeah, so the producers told me they were looking at a new girl. Her name is Cynthia. Uh, they love for me to go out with her. She and I decided to go out to like a lunch or a dinner or something. And I remember we went to Papa Do's. And uh, I remember Cynthia being like super nervous, like, oh my God, oh my God, this is Nene Leakes. And, and uh, we went to Papa Do's. Did you know who she was? I did not. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd never heard of her before. She was a supermodel. I still had not heard of her. The only oh. supermodels I had heard of was Naomi and Tyra and maybe a couple other black girls, Beverly. and Johnson. But I had never heard of Cynthia. Okay. She was on the Cosby show, too. I didn't see it. Okay. Y'all try it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just okay. So you, she, so are this you? This is the truth. No, I, I, never seen I, it. I believe you. So you, so so Cynthia Bailey, the supermodel, um, she was starstruck when she met you, and rightly so. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how did I go at Papa Do's? Um, at Papa Do's, uh, we clicked. 
I liked her. I think she liked me. Uh, I felt like she was a little nervous. I didn't think that she was like housewife material, just being honest. And I was like, you know, she's a little quiet. She's a little this. I don't know that she is the one that you guys are looking for. But I really enjoyed her and I liked her. And that was before I met Peter. Now, when you met Peter, what did you think of him? <laughs> When I met Peter, I thought too much, too much. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing it. Too much. Oh, too much. I was like, oh, okay. I see why y'all like Cynthia now. Because <laughs> he was turned up. You know, he had like a club in downtown Atlanta. I think it was called Uptown it or was. something like that. Yes. And, um, and he was just extremely like aggressive to me and just you know, loud, and I was just like, oh my God, like Cynthia's, you know, this is her guy, and um, so yeah, I got why they like Cynthia, because Peter was extra. If Cynthia was not with Peter Thomas, mm -hmm. would she have been a housewife? Um, I don't think so. I don't. I just don't think, not that she couldn't, because I know Cynthia. I know the Cynthia in front of the camera, and I know Cynthia that's not on camera. And so I feel like definitely the Cynthia that's not on camera has the strength, and, and she's vocal enough to be on the show, for sure, without Peter. But on camera, I felt like she never really wanted to show that side of her because of, listen, Cynthia can, she can, she can read and she can, I'm the one that told you guys on camp. I said, no, 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 no. Cynthia doesn't read, honey. Cynthia reads, honey. And so I know Cynthia and I know what she does. So, um, yeah, Cynthia's pretty fire. And, and let me tell you, she put Peter in his place many days. Oh, absolutely. I've been yes, witness of that. Yes, she I would cuss to. Peter out. Yes, she would. And people would be like, oh, Peter's just running over Cynthia. No. I said, Cynthia who? Uh -uh. <laughs> That's not the Cynthia we know. <laughs> Kick him out the house. Yeah, Cynthia would get Peter together. Yes, yes he had to sleep would. at bar one overnight. Yes, she would. Uh -huh. Cynthia would get him together. I know Cynthia very well. When you saw Peter, mm -hmm. this chocolate gorgeous man, were oh. you ever attracted to Peter? Never. Never attracted to Peter. Never had any. I don't think we, I think people wanted to think that Peter and I like had some sort of attraction. We never had anything. If anything, it was more like, I don't like you. And he was pretty much like, I don't like you. We kind of more like bumped heads more than like saw eye to eye. And we still do that today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Phaedra came on this season with Apollo. This is season three. Yes. Did you think Phaedra was good for the show starting out? Um, no, but listen, I mean, listen, it's not like they should listen to me. Honestly, you know, um, I started on the show not on day one. I shot the pilot for Real Housewives of Atlanta. So I feel like I shot season one and then shot season one again because we actually shot a whole pilot, yeah. shopped it, which people have never seen before. And then we started the season one with new girls, which were, it was me, Sheree, and Kim always in the pilot. And then we started with uh, Deshaun and Lisa. But in the pilot, Deshaun and Lisa were not in our pilot right. that we shot. So I think that when you hear me talk about the show, I talk about the show in a more personal way because I feel more connected to it. Mm -hmm. And I feel more like, you know, like it's my baby. And I always from day one wanted to see the show win and I wanted to see us succeed and I wanted to see all of us make money and things like that. So when certain people were coming around the show, obviously I had my personal opinions about it and, and simply they were just my opinions. I didn't make the decisions. Uh, no, when I saw Phaedra, I didn't think that she was right for the show. I had known Phaedra from back in Athens, and I felt some kind of way that she was coming on the show. Why? Um, I just did. Again, this is, it was my baby, and I just felt like, what is she doing here? You didn't feel like she deserved to be um, a, a housewife because the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and let, let's really talk about this, for real. The Real Housewives of Atlanta was, it was, it was um, a privilege to be a part yeah. of that show. Mm -hmm. And all of the girls in Atlanta wanted to be yeah, a part of it. They did. And a lot of, yeah. this is no disrespect, there's a lot of thirsty people in Atlanta. Yeah. And when we were at parties and events, they mm -hmm. would fight for camera time. These people who never mm -hmm. were even cast to be on mm -hmm. the show. Um, it, was, it, was, it was very privileged to be a part of it. Do you feel like Phaedra did not represent at that time what the show was about? No, it wasn't even that. I think that, uh, back to what you were saying, 
we were being talked about everywhere. What a lot of people don't understand, when the Real Housewives of Atlanta, our ensemble lunch, there was no love and hip hop, there was no basketball wise, no Hollywood exes, no Braxton show, no none of that. We were the first black ensemble in a very long time that had hit television. You know, prior to that, they had uh, Flavor of Love and uh, whatever, all Real those World, other shows, Real yeah. World, those kind of shows. But those shows has fizzled out. Those shows weren't on. The things that were on were like the Osbournes and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, the yep. Hills. The Kardashians were not on nope. yet. And I think that people really forget when they look back. We launched that reality platform for and held that door open for all of these black ensemble shows to walk in that door. There was never any of them before there was us. We were first. Mm -hmm. And people, everybody wanted to be. We were shooting all over Atlanta. Everybody was talking about us. From Ellen DeGeneres to Oprah Winfrey to Gail to everybody you can think of. Jimmy Fallon, they all talked about. You were featured in Oprah Magazine. I was. Everybody yeah. was talking about the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And um, so, again, it was a privilege to be on this mm -hmm. show. And so I always felt some kind of way when certain girls were like, oh, I want to be on Housewives. I was like, you know, what's she coming over here for? Like, we worked so hard, you know, to we started out with one van. And so we worked so hard and we got multiple vans and camera crews. <laughs> we didn't have any of that stuff to start with. And so I'm telling you, we were, the truth, it was, we were a know? low budget production. We were. <laughs> and so when I saw Phage, I was like, she's from Athens. Like, what is she doing up here? I'm from Athens. She don't come over here and try to steal my thunder. You know, I just felt like I was just protecting, you know, <laughs> my area and my space. Um, but she was a high powered attorney. She was. But I, uh, unfortunately, I just didn't feel that way. Okay. I, I do know that she's a, a, a high powered attorney. I know she's super funny. I like Phaedra a lot. But I'm just saying, at that time, at that moment, gotcha. I was just like, no, she shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Before we get into the next seasons, obviously, like you said earlier, mm -hmm. you started out being real, being yourself. You and Greg, may he rest in peace. You know, I love him, call him dad all the yeah. time. Hey, father. <laughs> um, you guys gave so much to the show. Yeah. Gave so much to it. Um, you have Bryson and Brent. You you gave, and, and, and your auntie who raised you, yes. Auntie TT. Yes. Do you regret putting your family business on the show? Um. I'm a reality star. I'm a TV personality, right? And I try to give everything I can give, and I just don't see no other way of doing it. But there are certain things that I do regret, okay? I do regret um, I disciplined my son once on camera that everybody goes back and, and say over and over, you done lost your damn mind. You know, yeah. I felt like that really hurt my son's feelings. And, uh, I, you know, I don't want to hurt my children in the process of doing something that I want to do. So I wish I could take that moment back. And I also, when Greg and I went through our divorce I wish that we hadn't put so much out there because we ended up getting back together and when we were getting back together we both were feeling kind of awkward like okay when are we gonna tell people that we back together because we <laughs> went through a whole divorce and you know said all kind of shit so yeah there are certain things that I wished I had not put out there but um they out there now for <laughs> hey raindrops yes come through we got merch Finally, Carlos King is giving y'all merch. We got raindrops. Allegedly. Come on, allegedly mugs, allegedly t-shirts. We have it all. Make sure you go on carloskingshop.com. That's right, carloskingshop.com. Pick it up, tell a friend, phone a friend and let's celebrate this all together. Now get into this video and make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and hit what? Yes, the notification button so you don't miss an episode. See ya. Bryson was recently in the news. Yes. Um, with alleged things of fentanyl, yes. alleging that he got caught by the cops and said yes. his name was Brent Leakes. Mm -hmm. um, how is Bryson doing? Um, I spoke to him on the phone. I think he's doing okay. Uh, he needs rehabilitation. He needs a lot of counseling. Uh, like many families out there, um, I have family members that are struggling with 
drugs and, and certain addictions. And uh, he has an addiction. Um, he's been struggling with it for years. He's been in rehab for a, a couple times, and um, he still have come back out and and uh, relapsed. Um, I have a, a brother that's an, an addict. I have a close cousin that's an addict. So unfortunately for us, our family, there's just been certain people that have been addicted to certain things, and it's a real struggle. And uh, as a mom, just to watch it is my hands are tied. You know, he is 31 years old. He's an adult. Um, he has three children, three beautiful children who I adore. Um, uh, he has a wife. Um, it's not much that I can do. For people who have had children or family members that have been on drugs, they know that um, they have to be ready. They have to simply be ready. You know, I've spent so much money on trying to get Bryson, you know, where he needs to be. But every time I've sent him off, it's because I said, you are getting your ass up and we are sending you off. But I learned through counseling myself that he has to say, I'm ready to go, not me making him go. So until Bryson is ready to to make a change, it's nothing I can do. As a mother, I would never wash my hands of my child, right? But um, I'm kind of numb to it because it's been happening for so many years. I'm just really kind of numb to the situation. And do you think, because I, I want to go deep here in terms of kids being raised mm -hmm. under the guise of television, whether it's acting, reality TV, singing. Yeah. Um, so Obviously, your children were brought up on reality television, yeah. being being famous because their mom is famous. Yes. Um, do you think Bryson being famous mm -hmm. and dealing with being on television, all those things, mm -hmm. affected his ability to be the adult you wanted him to be? Did it contribute to the drug usage and, and those things? You know, I don't have to say I don't think it helped. But I wouldn't say this the sole cause of yeah. it. It certainly didn't help because we started on television when Bryson was like in the 11th or 12th grade and Brent was in third grade. And um, so they, they're they having to be in a light, shine, a light shine on them that they did not ask for. Like I grew up in high school. I just grew up and I made all my mistakes and I didn't have to worry about people picking them apart. Well, they... People are picking them apart because of the job that I chose to do. And so I feel for them in that way. But there's just issues that he has. And I, I don't know addiction because I don't have an addiction. You know, I just know from what people have said to me. So I don't think it has 100% to do with it, but it certainly does not help it, being in the public eye. Did being on TV affect your marriage to Greg? Uh, yes. It affected my marriage to Greg because, again, Greg loved me for me, and he knew me for who I was. And also, my husband was the breadwinner in my case. Um, I wasn't working, and he made the money. And once I started to make more money than him, he started looking at me like sideways, like, oh, who she think she is? Because I no longer had to ask him for money. I no longer had to ask him for anything. If I wanted to go and buy the latest bag, I just go and buy the latest bag. And so I think that I pulled some of his strength or his power or something. I don't know. It Just as a man, it didn't make him feel great that I was making more money than him. No, it, it doesn't. The thing is this, and I want to talk about how women who are the breadwinner um, become mm -hmm. the breadwinner after mm -hmm. being married for so long. Mm -hmm. And the foundation was the man took care of me mm -hmm. and the household. Mm -hmm. The roles reversed. It's difficult for a man to accept that. And we're yes. seeing that on a lot of reality TV shows and even, even with celebrities. Mm -hmm. um, Greg had a very hard time. Yeah dealing with the fact that you no longer had to ask permission yeah. for stuff. Mm -hmm. And that not only were you able to do your own thing, you were able to do it in a grand scale, mm -hmm. which is very unique. Yeah. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Do you think, as you were gr going through this, you emasculated him in any way? Um, I probably did. I probably did. Um, not intentionally. Right. Um, I probably did. You know, my mouth probably was smarter. You know, I probably was up in his face a little bit tougher 
because, you know, I could take care of myself. So I probably did in many ways. And yeah. Yeah. One thing I want people to know. My husband, excuse me, Mm -hmm. Greg is from Atlanta, born and raised, and he is the true definition of an OG. And so he felt like his role as the husband and the head of the household was to take care of his family. And in a sense, I took some of that role away from him. Greg is old school. He's with opening up the door, and he's with all the things that a lot of the old school guys would do. He's here for, you know, help raising his kids, and he's, he's just an old school guy and uh, me making more money than him and not needing him. I literally did not need him at one point to not even put a light bulb up. I would just put it up myself or I call somebody to do it. Like I thought in my mind, I was just making our life easier, but uh, I was taking things rolls away from him as, you know, the man, the head of the household. And listen, I may get a lot of flack for this, but it's fine, but I would love to get Mm -hmm. your opinion. Um, I do feel like when women start to make money, unfortunately, they start to emasculate their man Mm -hmm. in a very subtle way, Mm -hmm. and sometimes not intentionally. No. Every man wants to feel like you need him. Yes, they do. Every man Mm -hmm. wants to feel wanted. Yes. I know a person who purposely pretends like she doesn't know how to do certain things Mm -hmm. because she wants her man to feel like, I, you know, you, oh, you mm-hmm. need me. Mm-hmm. And she makes more money than him, but she mm-hmm. she does seem like, oh, my gosh, how do I, how do I put my car and drive? I don't, I don't know how to, time for that. Well, you know what I mean? It's, it's mm-hmm. certain things because she, she wants mm-hmm. to feel like I do need you. Yeah. Do you feel like sometimes when a woman makes more money than her man mm-hmm. that they feel the need to take on this boss role? And I'm a boss, yeah. and I'm independent, and I don't need no man. I feel yes. like that's what happens, and men mm-hmm. get upset. I don't think I felt that way. I honestly thought I, listen, I love love. I love a relationship. I love to make my man feel great. I just didn't know that I was taking those things away from him. I wish I knew better. Um, I, I just didn't know that I was doing that. I do know better now, but I did not know that I was doing that at all. And when you were going through the divorce, I'll never forget this. Um, mm-hmm. I was doing your interview. This is season four. Mm-hmm. You and Greg are going through the divorce. A lot of people assumed Mm -hmm. that Nene got famous, Mm -hmm. she's rich, Mm -hmm. she's on Celebrity Repentance, she's doing it, and she wants to see how the grass is green on the other side. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, I remember the day you finalized your divorce. Mm -hmm. And I was with I was you. Devastated. You were devastated. You called me to your bedroom, and if you know mm-hmm. Nene Leaks, you are not allowed to go to her bedroom or her <laughs> closet, as we've seen on season <laughs> eleven, I think. Um, she called me to her bedroom, yes. and you said, "Carlos, we're divorced." Yeah. And you were so sad, I was so and hurt. you were devastated. And I wanted people to know that because you do have this reputation of, "Oh, she's this." Tough girl. Tough girl, very yeah. strong. <laughs> you were devastated that your yeah. marriage came to an official end. And you said to me, do not tell anybody. Yeah. And I said, I will never. And you said, I will tell the producers myself. Um, and you did it a week later. And I kept mm-hmm. her a secret for a week. Mm-hmm. Because I knew that you have to allow a person to go through the motions. Mm-hmm. Um, when you were going through that, what was going through your mind? Because people thought, okay, you're unhappy. You're free. Um, but you didn't feel free in that moment. Um, I knew that people I knew that people thought I was the strong one and that I was the one probably bossing Greg around, and I probably was the one that was doing whatever it was. Uh, Greg and I, relationship is very much like Cynthia and Peter. Most people think that it's Peter in any case with him and Cynthia. And so most people thought it was me, but it was actually very the opposite. Greg, although was very quiet, he was very strong. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And people had no idea that Greg, like Cynthia, could really gather you and get you really together and then turn right around and smile. Be like, now hi. He was very nice, nasty when he wanted to be. And um, he was like any other man. He did things that 
uh, me being a wife, did not appreciate or like. <laughs> and But I know everybody would think it would be me. I was devastated getting a divorce. I felt like I had to show Greg and teach him a lesson. And the only lesson that Greg was going to get was for me to divorce him. And I was going to have to carry it all the way through. And when I carried it all the way through, I would never forget Greg called me on the phone. He said, you bitch, you divorce me. <laughs> And I was like, because Greg could get you good, baby. Baby. He would get you right in a corner somewhere and gather you right up. He said, you bitch, <laughs> you divorced me. And I was like, I had to show your yeah. ass. And so, you know, our relationship wasn't any different than any other couple. I was devastated getting a divorce. I came from a home where I didn't have my mother or my father in my life, and I really wanted to have my kids in a two-parent household. That's what I wanted. But I also knew that I wanted to be happy, and Greg and I were just at a crossroad where we just couldn't see our way out of it at the time. You then started dating John. Yes. I talked to John last night. Really? Yes, I did. How is he? He's doing good. He actually called me about Bryce. Aww. He said, I heard what happened to Bryce, and I just want you to know that I will put him in a rehabilitation center in New York, and I will pay for it. And what did you say? So when does he get out? Grab him. <laughs> <laughs> Take him. I also, you know, not wow. just saying John, I mean, but because we're talking about him, but Lamar Odom also called me and said that he would uh, grab Bryce right away and send him to his place. He has a rehabilitation place somewhere. So I've gotten calls from people in support because, you know, honestly, it's nothing I can do. My hands are tied. I'm, I, I don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. And so John Collage called me last night. I won't tell you everything you said, honey. But he sure did tell me, start off the conversation about, honey, he will get ga gather Bryson, he will pay for it, all of it himself, and he will send Bryson to a place that he know in upstate New York. Please make that happen. Yes. Make that happen. That's beautiful. Yes. I, I think I got to go on a date with him. But okay. okay. Um, <laughs> do you still have the Rolex he gave you? <laughs> I sure do. I wore it here today. Ah, you know, <laughs> bitches I don't have it on. My bitches is mad. I have it in the dressing room. Okay. Um, I do. Glam, if you could break it off for a second, please. Ah! Yeah. Okay, just it. I was like, no, we'll show it. I actually oh, have wow. it. Oh, yeah, wow. I have it. What was it like dating John when you, before the John thing, what was it like being single because you, you weren't mm -hmm. You were married for so long. Well, I was with Greg and in my 20s. <laughs> there's nothing like dating again mm -hmm. when you got money. Yes, it's different. Bitch is different. It is very different. It is good. Mm -hmm. It is. It's and fun. you, It's mm -hmm. like the law of attraction. You start mm -hmm. attracting people mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. who may have the same things or more than you. Yes. And it feels fun. It feels sexy. It's between us girls, mm -hmm. did you enjoy it? You know, it was um, new. I would have to say, for me, Carlos, I'm a relationship person. So I don't know many times in my life where I've been just free and single. Most men want me. <laughs> so I <laughs> right away, I'm in a relationship. I don't stay single long. So right after I got broken up with um, Greg, shortly after I met, I went on Celebrity Apprentice, mm -hmm. which is where I met John Collage. And then we ended up being in a relationship. I really am a relationship person. I don't get a chance to date that often. I go right into it. I really want to know what dating is like. I would love to do it. I just don't think I've ever really had that happen in my life. In high school, I had a boyfriend. In college, I had a boyfriend. Right out of college, I had a boyfriend. And right after that, I met Greg. Like, I've always been in a relationship. When you were dating John and figuring mm -hmm. things out, did mm -hmm. you think, okay, I got a guy who, who mm -hmm. wants to buy me Rolexes and buy mm -hmm. me red bottles and mm -hmm. buy me the world? Maybe this is what... I should have. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, I, I would love to date men who have more money than me. And John had way more money than I had. And I didn't have to spend my money. I could spend all of his, and he would not even miss it because he had so much money. It was ridiculous. And I thought, oh, my God, this is so fun. I get to buy anything I want to buy. I get to do anything I want to do, travel anywhere I want to travel. So it was fun, like you, for the moment. Yes. But he didn't fulfill me in all the other areas. But uh, his pockets filled up my closet. <laughs> <laughs> I live, honey, for his shopping sprees. It he, was fun. He, there was no limit. Pick up anything you want. And if you were my friend and you were with me, he said, you get you something too. It was amazing being with him. I loved it. It was like a fairy tale to yeah. me. It was so fun. But other than that, after that, like we were like, what do we have? Yeah. We didn't have anything, though. 
Yeah. But we had a lot of shopping. I would, I, you know, oh, we'll have to get into my dating life later. Go on. No, I was, I was just going to say, um, and just like me and, and you, we got back together with our exes mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You got married. I did yeah. your wedding special. We got into a, <laughs> we got into a fight um, moments before she walked down the aisle. Oh, do you remember no. that, Nene? Yes, I do. So Nene was <laughs> getting married. Um, it was my first executive producer credit doing her 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 wedding special mm-hmm. and nini iced out me and the producers and the camera people and said leave me alone yes well i was saying leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> and we couldn't film her no more and she locked the door oh. and closed it on my face child yeah listen i was having a wedding mm-hmm. and um I've been a bride prior to, and there was no cameras on me like that. And I just needed a moment. I just needed a moment to just be like, I was on camera the whole day. I just needed a moment. That's all. But I still loved you just the same. Oh, no, no, no. We, we, listen, we made up and we everything made up was at good. The wedding. And yes, it was a great wedding special. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I just needed a moment. I know. It was a lot. And we cried. Yes. I it was cried. A- Joy forced me to apologize to you. Thank she you. said, you will regret being mad at her before she says, I do. Yes. And I walked up to you, the cameras were rolling, and I started to cry, and you said, bitch, you have a, a, a show to produce. Get out I of love here, you too, get out of here, bitch. Yes. Um, I wanna ask you this, because I wanna use this to clear the air. A lot of people have said, one of your famous lines is, close your legs to marry men. Yes. And people said you ended up opening your legs up to one. Hmm, How do you feel about that, that people said you were dating a man who was married? Um, I was dating a man who was legally married, going through a divorce. Like Kim and Big Papa? Uh, I don't think Big Papa went through a divorce. Uh, Yanni is divorced today as we sit here together. He is a divorced single man. And I don't think Big Papa have ever been divorced. In fact, he's back with his wife. I just saw him in Miami. At the Satai. Hi, Kim and Lee. Is his wife named Kim? Kimberly. Mm -hmm. Big Papa's wife name is Kim. Yes. (laughs) You can't make this shit up. You cannot. (laughs) Kimberly. (laughs) Well, that was easy to remember. So, um, yes, I said close your legs to married married men. Uh, When I met Yanni, he was a separated man. That's exactly what he told me. Now, I don't know what he told his wife who he was legally married to at the time. Uh, Today, as we sit here, Yanni is a single, divorced man. Did you meet him before Greg passed away? Absolutely not. A hundred percent. I think Yanni had been living in Atlanta maybe two months when I met him. And my husband had probably been passed away maybe a month or so. And I met him in Atlanta at Blue Martini. And uh, we both have been very, like, open and honest about our relationship. Um, I met him. A lot of people said you didn't even grieve. Honestly, when I look back, I thank God for Yanni because Mm. I don't think I could have made it. Um, He kept my mind busy. He kept me going. That's not saying that I didn't grieve. I would grieve a lot. Uh, Grieving is very hard. And how you grieve and how you choose to grieve, no one knows. I I would have never known I would have met a guy out just a month after my husband passed away. And when we met, we were just friends, just talking. He would invite me places, me and my friends, and we would go and hang out with him. And that kind of stuff. I mean, it wasn't serious. Um, It got serious, I think, because so many people were talking about seeing us together. So um, I feel like they made us serious when we weren't even trying to be serious. Mm -hmm. And today we're not serious. (laughs) Y'all aren't together today. Today we are taking a break. Uh, We've been taking a break. And Why? um, It's just things I'm not happy with and things he's not happy with. It's just not working at the moment. Um, he is single, so if any of the ladies out there want to holler, let him go right ahead. But if any of the fellas, honey, is. <laughs> <laughs> Only with a bag, honey. Only with a bag. You cannot talk to me. My next relationship will be absolutely private. Really? Why? Yes. 
I just don't want to be. This was the most public I think I've ever been in any relationship. It's more public than Greg's. And I just feel like it's just best to be private. Also, um, I know from dating Yanni and Yanni, has a great career. He makes great money. Uh, sort of like what we were talking about earlier. I just want my guy to make more money than me. I really do. Um, that's just going to be best. I need you to make more money than me. The best advice I was told is in any relationship, it needs to be one star per household. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, being with somebody like Yanni, I think it, it will be a two star household. Mm -hmm. I think that he will want to be more front and center. And um, we just can't have that. People have said that he was using you for fame. Mm -hmm. Do you think that? Um, I don't know that he was using me for fame, but he sure wasn't hating on it. <laughs> <laughs> he liked I taking think, the pictures. And, of course. Mm -hmm. And that was different because Greg never. Right. And I also would always look at him like, okay, <laughs> yeah, it felt different. And I agree, it should be one star per household. Unless it's one of your kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it was, yeah, it was different. I think, honestly, um, I don't know if he was using me or not. Honestly, I was just grieving i don't know what was happening i'm just going with the flow if he said get up and get dressed i got up and got dressed he said we leave in town i got up and left town are you in love with him no were you ever in love with him um i i love yanni um i think when you say in love i think those those that is very different and i'm not sure that we are there i think we got very close do you ever think you were experienced the type of love you have with Greg with another man? I do not. Mm -mm. I think that, you know, again, my love with Greg was the ultimate. And uh, I feel like you just don't find love like that. I don't know that I'll ever find that again. Mm. I just don't. Does that make you sad a little bit? Um, Cause you, you know, you got all this energy. You're gorgeous. You're young. And you know. Yeah, I think that I will find a, a guy, right? Yeah. A great guy uh, to spend my life with. But... Greg, he was pretty up there. It's going to be hard to get up there. Greg was up there. Oh, no. Greg, yeah. is, Greg is the greatest love of your life. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. He was great. And 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 uh, I was with Greg. You have to understand I grew with Greg because I was in my 20s and my 30s and my 40s. And so I was growing with Greg. So that was just a different time, and I don't think that I'll ever have that again. Um, I hope that I I hope that I meet a great guy, though. And I'm open to all ethnicities. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, you got to be wanting to travel, honey. You got to have a bag. Yeah, that's all right. Call Marlo. So the, the uh, <laughs> I don't think Marlo, you know, lock them in like that. Like, I'm a relationship person. They usually go with me. I think Marlo goes on a date. We go years Okay, together. that's what you want. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. No, I, I'll go on a date, too. You know, I told you I never experienced dating before. So I would like to date... I want you to have a whole phase. Oh. I want you to go out there and just date, meet men, get banged. And get bags. And, and get, yes, get banged bags and, you know, mm -hmm. t billions. Ew. <laughs> That's the only one I'll be talking to, honestly. I can't do it. They have to be top Wealthy. tier. Yes. They have to be wealthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk. Honestly, I don't want to. I just don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with having fights about you think you're this or you think you're that because you can't do this. I don't want to do it. How do you feel when people ask you if you still have money, if you're mm -hmm. broke, are you struggling? I don't think I've ever been asked that question before. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm struggling, if I'm broke, if I have money. Uh, well, I'm not broke. <laughs> well, that is not happening yet. Lord Jesus, please let that shit happen. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, um, I, I, that's the only thing I can say is that, of course, I'm not there, but, yeah. So you're good. Yes. Well, let's get back into season five. Kenya and Portia came on the show, okay, mm -hmm, Portia, yes. at the same time. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say something, and I'm curious if you agree with me or not. 
I think Kenya and Portia saved the show. Um, I don't know. I, I, you have to take me back to that moment. Okay. Um, I know they were great additions. They were. So I didn't mm -hmm. work on season five. I was doing yeah. another show. Mm -hmm. And I remember season four. Season four felt weird to me. Mm -hmm. It felt yeah. weird, um, just in terms of the dynamic. It was, mm -hmm. I, I agree with you in terms of what is this show becoming? Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, as somebody who did not work on season five, mm -hmm. I remember watching Kenya and Portia and being like, these are two new great additions. And I felt like they changed the temperature of the show. That could be true. And sure. I remember being invited to your Shoe Dazzle event. That's right. This is when Kenya came in pretending to be Phaedra with the, with the yes, butt pads yes, and the fishnet yes, outfit. Yes. And you were so tickled mm -hmm. by Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I was just sitting there as a viewer at that point, like, mm -hmm. what is this show? Like, this show isn't what I what I accustomed to. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like Kenya and Portia saved it from becoming redundant. Okay. And I felt mm -hmm. like they brought something to the show that was needed. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on Kenya and Portia coming on season five? Um, I, I don't remember it the way that you do. Uh, they were definitely great additions to the show. Um, obviously, we were all excited about having Kenya because she had been Miss USA. So we all knew her as Miss USA. See, I didn't know her as an actress or anything. I just knew her as the black Miss USA. And we thought of her as a black Barbie doll. And I did not know Portia at all. Now, I knew her grandfather, which was Hosea, and all everybody in Atlanta know Hosea Feed the Hungry and the Homeless. Mm -hmm. And so I was excited to meet her as well. But um, um, I don't remember everything and how they may have changed the show, but I do remember we went to Anguilla. Mm -hmm. And I remember her and Phaedra started out as friends. Kenya and Phaedra started mm -hmm. out as, I thought, cool in mm -hmm. the beginning. And then somehow it took a turn with Apollo being involved. And I remember thinking that this is a moment when Kenya just somehow just went into twirl and twirl and twirl. And I was standing there looking like, what the hell just happened? Because it just kind of like came out of nowhere and she was just twirling around. And I thought to myself, what the hell is she doing? <laughs> and so that was really different. And I remember I was the one sitting with Portia when she was, she was her and Kenya never clicked from mm -hmm. the moment go. And I remember her telling me, you know, it was 265 days a year. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I just thought, you know, for me, it was like, what are we in? These girls, are, Kenya is twirling and she thinks it's 265 days in a year. It was just really different for me. And then I I remember meeting her husband, Cordell, was Portia's husband at the time. And um, I, I didn't think that, I felt like he held Portia back a lot. I, I don't know, fast forward, if you remember me and, 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 and Candy and a few of us, I remember the producers saying that after this season, they didn't want to really have Portia back because she they started to not. go. They did not want to have her back. And I often think that people forget, not saying, but Portia, I'm just saying now. Uh, sometimes I think people forget. They really forget. Uh, the producer were really like no to Portia. I can confirm yeah, right now true. that Portia was on the chopping block. She was. I, I was brought back to produce season mm -hmm. five reunion, mm -hmm. just the reunion. Yeah. And I remember telling the producers, I'm talking as a viewer. Mm -hmm. I like Portia. I think yeah. she's great. I don't think you guys should get rid of her. Portia was 100% on the chopping block. She was. And so Candy and I, and I can't remember if there was anyone else, but I know it was Candy and I, we called and talked to production and the network about keeping Portia because Portia was going through a divorce. And we were like, you guys can't get rid of her right now. I mean, she really needs this show. Just let her stay and see how it works. And we went to full on bet for Portia and Portia stayed on the show. And, you know, sometimes people forget who goes for bat for them, honey, because that was a bat <laughs> mm -hmm. because you were out. No, she was on the chopping block. And I, and I too, yeah. so I was the executive producer season six, mm -hmm. and I was, like, fighting for Portia. I said, mm -hmm. Portia's great. Um, we need her on the show. Mm -hmm. Season six is in the Guinness Book of World Records mm -hmm. for being the highest rated season ever mm -hmm. on Bravo. Mm -hmm. and, and we reach, bitch, close to five million viewers, mm -hmm. which is insane. Mm -hmm. Um, season six had five you, million. What season was that? Season six. Season six. And this is season what? Fifteen. And they five hundred. 
That's a difference, isn't it? Wow, what a big difference. Okay, five million five hundred. We'll get to that in a second, baby. So season six is the highest rated season. Let's just sit there for a second. Mm. 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 Okay. Uh uh-uh, uh, Carlos King, honey. Five million to five hundred. That's a new new tagline. Okay. So it was close to five million season six. Mm-hmm. We had Nini, Kenya, Candy, Phaedra, Portia, and Cynthia. Mm-hmm. Till this day, to this day, people say that's the best cast that the Real Housewives has ever seen. Mm-hmm. Those those six housewives. Mm-hmm. Do and you Marlo ag- was a friend. And Marlo was a friend. Mm-hmm. Do you agree that when you think about seasons one to the time you were on, that season six cast was the strongest cast on the Real Housewives of Atlanta? I agree. I Tell agree. me why. Um, I think at that moment, I feel like all of, first of all, we had a lot of conflict. We had a lot of freaking conflict. And everybody was speaking their opinion. Everybody was working. Everybody stepped up to their role. You know, because as seasons went on, people started to not step up. But those that season, I feel like everybody stepped up. Everybody had a storyline. It was just a great time for all of us. It really was. No, it was my first time being the mm-hmm. EP of the show, The Showrunner. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, oh, I forgot. And you were the EP. Yeah, that's... That's mainly why? Well, absolutely. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, no, listen, listen. I got the job. I'm the first um, executive producer who never had to interview for the job. Oh, well, I didn't you should have to not have. I mean, you worked yeah. your way. Yeah, they said to me... And you knew all the girls. I knew all the girls, yeah. and I knew, I knew the dynamics, and mm-hmm. they all said to me, it is your job. Mm-hmm. to revolutionize this show. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, damn, bitch, I just wanted to see if I'm able to, like, twirl with Kenya for a second time. But I, I digress. Okay. So <laughs> season six came along. We, I just finished our wedding special. Mm-hmm. Um, we all collectively said, we're going to bring it. And I'm going to say mm-hmm. this. All of y'all were so happy I was mm-hmm. the EP. Mm-hmm. And y'all all said to me, we also going to make sure you look good, bitch, right. because I was mm-hmm. the first black man to EP the show. And y'all was mm-hmm. like, bitch, oh, we going we gonna to do it. Mm-hmm. We all together made that season a success. Mm-hmm. Um, you and Kenya started all being cool. And then some way, somehow, it became destructive. A lot of people, Nene, mm-hmm. feel that you were jealous of Kenya and that you were threatened by her becoming the star of the show or that Kenya thought she was the star. Um, I have never thought Kenya was the star of the show. Now, I'm not even being shady. No, seriously. I mean, I know it may... Honestly, I've never thought she was the star of the show. Ever. And I'm not even plain. I think Kenya is great on the show. And I think she is a great... She was a great addition to the show when she came on. And I think the show needs Kenya, by the way. Uh, But I've never saw her as the star of Real Housewives of Atlanta, ever. Why not? I just didn't see her as the star of the show. And, and certainly she wasn't the star when I was there. Um, and I'm just being for real. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, never, I just never saw that. I just haven't. No. I just haven't seen it. And, and uh, I've never been threatened by any of the girls. In fact, I would go as far as to say I believe I am one of the girls. I don't know about all the rest of them. I am one of the girls that felt like we all need to work hard to make this show great. Absolutely. So that we can all get paid and get a check. Now, there was many of them that didn't, to me, that didn't feel that way. I felt like I needed to come to work. I would try to figure out whatever. What y'all, we, we need an event. I'm trying to help y'all. I want to figure it I want the show to succeed. You were the so, anchor. Yeah. So I don't, I just, some of these girls come on, they don't have no plans. They don't have no nothing. They're not trying to do anything. They just kind of chilling. They're getting a check. And I feel some kind of way about any chick that's on this show just getting a check yes. when I am giving the blood out of my veins to make sure that this show is successful. So no shade to Kenya. I think she's great on the show, and I think she is much needed. But I've never seen her as the star of the show, and I have never once ever been threatened by not one woman they ever bring on this show. If anything, they are threatened by my presence. Was Kenya threatened by your presence? Very possible, because I won't be backing down to any of these girls, ever. Not ever in life. On the show, off the show, around the show, behind the show, anytime, anytime any place, anywhere. I'm never going to be backing down. So what happened on Pillow Talk? 
Pillow mm-hmm. Talk, obviously, you and your negligee yes. um, was strung up and down the, the hotel suite at the Intercontinental. Mm. And Kenya was late. Yes. And I want to break the fourth wall here. Kenya was late, and you were frustrated mm-hmm. because I don't think people know this. As the host of an event, the pressure's on you to make sure even the event is good. And let's be clear, to make sure that this shit gonna be used. Yes, right. And you bitches aren't about to embarrass me mm-hmm. for my event, bitch, because right. I show up to y'all's. Right. So you have this pressure on you. Mm-hmm. Kenya was late, significantly late. <laughs> um, she walked in in her negligee. You slammed the door. She said, hey, Nene, you said, hey, bitch. She said, you look good. I said, you don't. You said, you don't. She said, I always look good. You said, you really think you look good, but you really don't. Mm -hmm. And then (laughs) you tapped on the butt. That was the start of the decline of y'all friendship. What frustrated you that day about Kenya being so late? Um... I have you guys know a lot of these girls are extremely late, <laughs> not just Kenya. Mm-hmm. Many of them are very late, and that's very frustrating. Uh, if we have to be somewhere at 4 and everybody trickles in at 6, it's just very upsetting. <laughs> so you may have arrived very happy and ready to have a good time, but two hours later sitting there waiting on everybody to arrive, you're like, bitch, what's wrong with you? You know, I've been here since four. So I think it was that kind of energy towards her. And I'm not sure, but I can say this. I don't think Kenya and I ever like clicked like we would like we like people think we should have. I don't think we ever had like that moment where we really like like uh and I, and and when we did have times when we were cool like if you remember she was living in like a hotel and I visited her and do you remember that I, I think yeah. I talked about the, her refrigerator or this is the ghetto. Oh honey child, this is the ghetto child. My and, refrigerator. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I think that was probably one of the closest times we've ever been. I I've, I've liked her. Um, I saw her recently too in Neiman Marcus. And of course I said hi. Like I don't, you know What did y'all talk about? Nothing. We just hi from afar. Hi, hi. Why you didn't go up and have a conversation? I, I would have. I mean it's, I wasn't like I wasn't against, you know, I don't have any problem with these girls. But uh but we just kinda said hey and she went on her way and I went on my way. Um Yeah, I, I just I, I don't think that we ever had the chance to do that because when she came on the first season, I felt like she had an alliance with Phaedra. So, and me and Phaedra were kind of like bumping heads a little bit, but she was down with Phaedra. And then her and Phaedra ended up bumping heads. And then she started being, I'm not sure if it was Candy or who it was. She kind of played with Candy a little bit, but not a whole lot. And then her and Candy got close like later down the line. And then she started coming from my best friend, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like we just never got a chance to like get like totally cool. Like we, like most people think that we would have gotten. What went wrong with you and Cynthia's friendship? Um, do you think people thinking Cynthia was weak, and mm. people saying you let Nene run over you? Yeah. Um, maybe even Peter allegedly may have said those things to her too. Mm-hmm. Do you think the destruction of your friendship with Cynthia came because? She let people get into her ear about you. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Cynthia definitely let people get in her head. Like a lot of girls, even Marlo was even at a point where she's like, oh, they think that, I, you know, you know, like you, 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 you know, telling me what to do or bossing me around. And, you know, I, I feel like those girls wanted to have their own identity, which they did. But they would always let people get in their head like Nene is running this, Nene is... And it wasn't even like that. It was like, we're friends, and you know what our friendship is. Don't let somebody get in your head. Like, you know we cool. You know I'm not running you. But I think they felt in their heart they needed to prove it somehow. Um, I don't know. I know that uh, I loved Cynthia like she was my sister. Uh, we had a great friendship. And I think people watching us probably felt like, I may have been more of the leader in the friendship, or I may have been more of something. They just don't know Cynthia. Who is Cynthia behind the scenes that you wish people would see? Um, Cynthia is quite different than she is, you know, on the scene. In what way? Yeah, I think that Cynthia, she's not going to let you run over her, so (laughs) that's not possible (laughs) for people thinking that she's being ran over or for people thinking that she's quiet. She's very opinionated. Uh, She has a lot to say, and um, she stands up for herself. 
Why do you think she didn't want to show that in front of the camera? That's who she is. Um, there's a lot of these girls that come on the show and they don't show who they are. Remember, I made a conscious decision season one to just be who I am, mm -hmm. right? And some of these girls come on and they just, I don't know, they play with their head. They're like, I don't want to be seen that way or my family would die if I was seen that way or my husband doesn't want me to do this or my boyfriend said I can't do that. And so they just create some character. And I just think that Cynthia never wanted people to really see her be, uh, as she liked to say, 50 cents. <laughs> okay. Do you miss Cynthia? Um, I miss the friendship that we had because I feel like we had a, a really good friendship. And I cherish my friendships. And I feel like, you know, uh, you know, it's hard to find really good friends. And... Um, it's unfortunate what happened to our friendship. But why can't you guys rekindle the friendship? I don't think that will ever be possible. Why? Uh, because I just know some of the things that she has done behind the scenes that I just could never, ever, ever respect. Now, that now I can't respect them, but that doesn't mean I couldn't work with her. I could work with her, but I can't respect some of the stuff that I know for certain that she did. Did she try to stop your bag? Um, as much as she was on camera saying I'm trying to stop hers, <laughs> she was definitely trying to stop mine. <laughs> from Bravo? Of course from Bravo. I know a lot of things she did, honey. By she was in an alliance too, honey. With with producers or housewives? She was in an alliance with housewives and behind the scene with producers and network. To get she you was. off the show? I believe she tried. I think she had a hand in trying to get it done. Mm -hmm. Really? Absolutely. But what, what, how would that benefit her? Um, I don't know. I think that some of these girls, they feel like maybe if they do certain things, maybe they'll stay on the show longer. Maybe they'll get other opportunities. But for me, I feel like where I think these group of girls go wrong at is if we all stuck together and held hands together so that we can all work and all eat together, we would all be better together. I feel like trying to push this person off the show and push that person off of the show. Obviously, when we go places, people ask us, who do you think should be on the show? Or who do you think shouldn't be on the show? And we all give our opinions. I mean, and we have the right to do that. But that's not saying I don't want the show to be successful and I don't want you to be successful. I might just be saying, I don't think you're doing what you should be doing on the show. Because we know together, like, who comes on the show and who's really doing something, who's really trying to put an event together, who's really trying to push the show forward. You guys have a lot of girls who are lacking. But the audience don't know that kind of stuff. They're just looking at the show like, oh, we like her, and Nene's against her, or this one is against this one. It's just not like that, but... Oh, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that. Because the thing is, she and you did have a real friendship. And I remember mm -hmm. um, y'all calling me when Kenya had the masquerade ball, and you were like, Carlos, <laughs> um, she trying to play me. It was you and Cynthia on a three with me. Should you go? Should you not go? And you did show up to the masquerade ball. You said this epic line of, it's amazing how many friends I have and don't even know about it. Of course. <laughs> Today, <laughs> it's amazing how many friends I have that I don't even know about it. So you True. are. It saddens me where things are because I will say yeah. this on the record: you were the anchor of the show. You, not to be disrespectful to the other girls because they know my mm -hmm. heart and I don't mean it to come yeah. across this way. Mm -hmm. They really did look up to you in the sense mm -hmm. of what we're we gonna do. See I this? didn't feel that, though. Oh, I can I can say to you, let me tell you something. I honestly didn't feel that. I always felt like, you know, I always felt like I wasn't supported on the show. Uh, that's This is just my feelings. Mm -hmm. now, I honestly felt like I wasn't supported the way I felt I should have been supported from the girls, from production, from everybody. Now, and I could be looking at it totally wrong. I just felt like I didn't get the support that I should have gotten and deserved in every kind of way. I just don't feel like I got that kind of support. Because at one point on the show, I was the only original. You mm -hmm. know, Kim was only there for whenever she was there. I was the only original girl on the show. And I felt like everybody came on the show or whatever the plot was, every new person come on the show and come for NeNe. Everybody come for NeNe. Everybody go after NeNe. And um, 
that is just tired at some point and it's tiring and it's also not fair for to be the person that everybody is jumping on and uh, villainizing and it doesn't feel good to be in that position every single time well that's interesting because i always saw you as this anchor and the queen bee and again that doesn't mm -hmm. mean the other girls are lesser now i want to make that clear you were the queen bee of the show, mm -hmm. and you were the face of the show. Mm -hmm. And at one point in time, Nene, you arguably was the most famous black reality star in the world. Mm -hmm. Not at one time, at this very moment. No, but no, I'm saying, no, you still <laughs> no, you still are. You I still haven't are. seen her if she's out there. Where is she? Well, Tammy Roman says hi, but. <sighs> <laughs> Hey, Tammy, and no, I'm teasing. Hey, Tammy, girl, call me, and we'll talk about that. We love Tammy. You know, all jokes aside, the face of black reality TV and the face of reality television, white women love you. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. I mean, you... I don't go anywhere without people stopping me. Black, white, old, young, yes. children, everybody, honestly. You were also in network shows. Ryan mm -hmm. Murphy loves you. Mm -hmm. Before I finish... How is your relationship today with Ryan Murphy? I haven't seen Ryan in forever, but uh, there's nothing but love there. Uh, I saw him a few years ago, and of course, we loved each other up and hugged and all those things, but I haven't seen him in a very long time. Is there anything that happened between the never. two of you? Okay. Never anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I've never had a problem ever, let's be very clear. I've never had a problem ever on any show that I've ever worked on before, ever. This is Housewives is the only show that they try to give me the reputation, but I've never. My thing, and I've always spoken about it publicly, is to show up at work. I don't need anything. I'm not one of those talents that show up on set, and I need this, chicken wings, a whole bunch of drinks, roses, M&M, peanuts, all, car service, all this kind of stuff. I don't need any of that. I need some water and my check, and that's all I need, honey. I show up, I do what you ask me to do, and goodbye. And that's it for me. So there's no reason for anybody on any set to have any issue with me. I come, I purposely be going to set and be like, don't say nothing, shut up. Okay, y'all, they calling for us, let's go. Hurry up, Glam, let's get on set. You know, I try to be on time with these people. I don't try to do anything. I don't want to cause no problems. Because that's the first thing I feel like they want to be able to say is that you come another black girl causing problems. So I don't want to be her. Why did you feel the need to sue Bravo NBC and Andy Cohen? Baby, part two of my exclusive interview with Nene Leakes drops next Tuesday, August 1st at 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern.